Now, when we think about the longest and shortest days that we have on Earth, we would probably associate our longest day with the summer solstice and the shortest day with the winter solstice. But it's actually the other way around. And the reason for that is when we think about the longest and shortest day, we're thinking about daylight hours. So in that case, then yes, you would have longer daylight hours in the summer and shorter in the winter. However, we're talking about the actual the rotation of Earth and one complete rotation and they do differ depending on where the Earth is in its orbit and the winter solstice is actually the longest 24 hour period of or one full rotation essentially. So we're going to have a look at why that's the case and why the summer solstice is actually the shortest day. So before we do that we need to have a look at two rotation periods of the Earth. So the first one is the sidereal period that's essentially one full rotation in 360 degrees and the synodic period or the solar um, day I, I suppose it would be called and that is more than a full rotation they're not the same and it's going to relate to why the winter solstice is longer than the summer solstice in a rota in rotation um, period so the sidereal period of earth this is one full rotation where it is 360 degrees and back round to the same location again or same position and uh, that is just under 24 hours so you're looking at about 23 hours 56 minutes and just over four seconds that's how long it takes for the earth to rotate once and be back exactly where it started and that's the sidereal period of earth now that would put us with the same so if we looked in the sky and looked at the stars the stars would be in the same position during one full rotation so that is what this particular period is as if we're looking at the stars the background stars they would be in the same position we wait for them to be back in the same position again that is our sidereal period now the synodic period again it's normally kind of referred to as the this the solar period or the solar day and this is longer than a 360 degree rotation it has to go a little bit further around and the mean length is 24 hours now it does vary so this is not always the same during a year and it changes, it goes greater than that and less than that. But the mean length of this particular period is about 24 hours, which is what we use. So why is it actually longer? Well, the Earth is orbiting the Sun and as it is er orbiting the Sun, the Earth is rotating. And because it's moved along a little bit, in order for you to have the sun in the same position in the sky, it's got to rotate that a little bit further. So instead of using the background stars this time around, we're using the sun as the reference point. And the Earth has moved from the day before. And in order for you to get it in exactly the same location, so here you've got those green lines there, which are the direction of the sun. And you can see that actually it's gone round once, and then it's got to go a little bit further, so that the sun is going to be in the same location in the sky. So that is why it's a little bit longer. So now we know that, we can now look at why it's different in different parts of its orbit. Now Earth's orbit is elliptical. So there are locations in it where it's closer to the sun and locations where it's furthest away. Now the bit we're interested in for the winter solstice is the perihelion. So that is when it's at, at the closest point to the sun. So it's at its closest point here than it is the other one. Now the bit that's interesting here is that the Earth's velocity on its orbit is faster at perihelion than on the opposite side. So on the opposite side it's travelling slower but as it gets closer to the Sun at its closest approach it's orbiting at its fastest. Now when we then look at the synodic period or the solar period so to get the Sun in the same place in the sky again it's actually got to rotate further because it's orbiting the Sun and at that location it's traveling faster so it's actually traveled further so the Earth has to rotate a little bit more just to put the Sun in the same location again so at the winter solstice the Earth is located approximately near the perihelion I think it's around about January actually that it reaches the perihelion but because it's located there and closest to the Sun it's traveling fur fastest so therefore the Earth has to rotate that a little bit further during the winter solstice so a full rotation or a solar day of the Earth is a little bit more than during the summer solstice which will be a little bit shorter. So thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos.